Summer of 1934. Hope in a drizzle. Quarter inch of rain is nothing to complain about. It help, it'll help the plants above ground and start the new seeds growing. That quarter inch of rain did wonders for Ma, too, who is ripe as a melon these days. What does it mean she's ripe as a melon? She pregnant she, she's, 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 she's big, right? She third trimester big. <laughs> she has nothing to say to anyone anymore except how she aches for rain. At breakfast, at dinner, all day, all night, she aches for rain. Today, she stood out in the drizzle, hidden from the road and from Daddy, and she thought from me. But I could see her from the barn. She was bare as a pear. <laughs> Raindrops sliding down her skin, leaving traces of mud on her face and her long back, trickling dark and light paths, slow tracks of wet dust down the bulge of her belly. My, my dazzling maw, round and ripe and striped like a melon. July 1934. Okay, so if you've ever seen a mommy that's like really big pregnant, like their tummy almost kind of looks like it has, it's not really, but you can kind of see like faint little stripes. Yeah. Yeah. It just, oh, that's, what, that's what it means. Legs. It's not even that it's stretch marks. It's just, it's just where the skin is, so, just, you can just kind of look like so that. This, so, are they, are they going to start getting hints that there's more than one? We don't know what there is. Let's the keep going. Is connected. Okay, so the Dion quintuplets. You just watched the video, right? Yeah. Oh, never mind. Darn it. While the dust blew down our road against our house, across our fields, up in Canada, a lady named Elzir Dion gave birth to five baby girls all at once. I looked at Ma, so pregnant with one baby. Can you imagine five, I said? Ma lowered herself into a chair, tears dropping on her tight, stretched belly. She wept just to think about it. July 1934. Why is she crying? It's a lot of work, Chang. One girl's too much. Wild boy of the road. A boy came by the house today. He asked for food. He couldn't pay anything, but Ma sat him down and gave him biscuits and milk. He offered to work for his meal. Ma sent him out to see Daddy. The boy and Daddy came back late in the afternoon. The boy walked two steps behind in Daddy's dust. He wasn't more than 16 thin as a fence rail. I wondered what Livy Killian's brother looked like now. I wondered about Livy herself. Daddy asked if the boy wanted a bath, a haircut, a change of clothes before he moved on. The boy nodded. I never heard him say more than yes sir or no sir or much obliged. We watched him walk away down the road in a pair of Daddy's mended overalls, his legs like willow limbs, his arms like reeds. Ma rested her hands on her heavy stomach. Daddy rested his chin on the top of my head. His mother is worrying about him, Ma said. His mother is wishing her boy would come home. Lots of mothers wishing that these days, while their sons walk to California where rain comes and the color green doesn't seem like such a miracle and hope rises daily like sap in a stem. And I think someday I'm going to walk there too. Through New Mexico and Arizona and Nevada, someday I'll leave behind the wind and the dust and walk my way west and make myself to home in that distant place of green vines and promise. July 1934. That's what Does that means. Yeah. It's like near Utah or something. They're in Texas. Texas. What? Is this never? What? Is this never used to Oh, she said it to the promise. Is that remind me of the verse in the Bible? The promised land. Yeah. It was said it though. What if the mom dies giving birth? What? Those five girls. No, the actual mom gives birth to one boy. What is she? What now? What? What is the one that's giving birth? I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's pretty much it. We're not allowed to litter anywhere. Okay, here we go. Let, ready? Next chapter. <gasps> the accident. The accident. <gasps> oh my gosh! It was the biggest accident. accident. Okay, sh Big listen. Johnson. I got burned bad. Oh. Daddy put a pail of kerosene. That's like gas. Oh. Daddy put a pail of kerosene next to the stove, and Ma, fixing breakfast, thinking the pail was filled with water lifted it to make daddy's coffee, poured it. But instead of making coffee, Ma made a rope of fire. It rose up from the stove to the pail and the kerosene burst into flames. Ma ran across the kitchen, out the porch door, screaming for daddy. I tore after her. Then, thinking of the burning pail left behind in the bone dry kitchen, I flew back and grabbed it. Throwing it out the door, I didn't know. I didn't know Ma was coming back. Oh, okay. Makes me want to cry. Here we go. 
The flaming oil splashed onto her apron and Ma. Suddenly, Ma was a column of fire. I pushed her to the ground, desperate to save her, desperate to save the baby, I tried, beating out the flames with my hands. I did the best I could, but it was no good. Ma got burned bad. July 1934. It just said I got burned bad. Well, she did too. She was using her hands to try to put the fire out. Oh, my God. Okay, last one. Yes. I know, girl. It's hard for me too. Burns. At first, I felt no pain, only heat. I thought I might be swallowed by the heat, like the witch in Hansel and Gretel, and nothing would be left of me. Someone brought Doc Rice. He tended Ma first, then came to me. The doctor cut away the skin on my hands. It hung in crested strips. Ew. He cut my skin away with scissors, then poked my hands with pins to see what I could feel. He bathed my burns in antiseptic. Only then the pain came. July 1934. I, I can't... I can't, like, wait, wait, not sure how that material works. Cutting your hands off with scissors. Okay, we're going to keep going because tomorrow I won't be here. Thank God. Okay? Oh, thank you. Okay, nightmare. I'm awake now, still shaking from my dream. I was coming home through a howling dust storm. My lowered face was scrubbed raw by dirt and wind. Grit scratched my eyes. It crunched between my teeth. Sand chafed inside my clothes against my skin. Dust crept inside my ears, up my nose, down my throat. I shuddered, nasty with dust. In the house, dust blew through the cracks in the walls. It covered the floorboards and heaped against the doors. It floated in the air, everywhere. I didn't care about anyone, anything, only the piano. I searched for it, found it under a mound of dust. I was angry at Ma for letting in the dust. I cleaned off the keys, but when I played, a tortured sound came from the piano, like someone shrieking. I hit the keys with my fist and the piano broke into a hundred pieces. Remember, this is a dream. Uh -uh. Daddy called to me. He asked me to bring water. Ma was thirsty. I brought up a pail of fire and Ma drank it. She had given birth to a baby of flames. The baby burned at her side. I ran away to the Eaton's farm. The house had been tractored out, tipped off its foundation. No one could live there. Everywhere I looked were dunes of ripple dust. The wind roared like fire. The door to the house hung open and there was dust inside, several feet deep, and there was a piano. The bench was gone right through the floor. The piano leaned toward me. I stood and played. The relief I felt to hear the sound of music after the piano, oh, sorry, the relief I felt to hear the sound of music after the sound of the piano at home. I dragged the Eaton's piano through the dust to our house, but when I got there, I couldn't play. I had swollen lumps for hands. They dripped a sickly pus. They swung stupidly from my wrists. They stung with pain. When I woke up, the part about my hands was real. July 1934. She's in pants no more? They're burned really bad. But I thought the doctor cut it off with scissors. Cut, no. Just cut off parts of the skin that was burned. Yeah. Oh, I thought he cut off the whole hand. No, my just hand, parts of skin. It, okay. A tent oh, of oh. pain. Daddy has made a tent out of the sheet over Ma, so nothing will touch her skin. What skin she has left. I can't look at her. I can't recognize her. She smells like scorched meat. Her body groaning there. It looks nothing like my ma. It doesn't even have a face. Daddy brings her water and drips it inside the slit of her mouth by squeezing a cloth. She can't open her eyes. She cries out when the baby moves inside her. Otherwise, she moans day and night. I wish the dust would plug my ears so I couldn't hear her. July 1934. Drinking. Daddy found the money Ma kept squirreled in the kitchen under the threshold. It wasn't very much, but it was enough for him to get good and drunk. He went out last night while Ma moaned and begged for water. He drank up the emergency money until it was gone. I tried to help her. I couldn't aim the dripping cloth into her mouth. I couldn't squeeze. It hurt the blisters on my hands to try. I only made it worse for Ma. She cried for the pain of the water running into her sores. She cried for the water that would not soothe her throat and quench her thirst. And the whole time, my father was in Gaiman drinking. Uh, July 1934. I don't like I, listen, I know, I'm sure, you know, he's got to be in a whole bunch of pain as well, right? Now, it's not, he didn't make a good choice to go out and do that, but he's, he's got to be in a bunch of pain, too. All right, last one. He didn't go through that fire. Devoured. Doc sent me outside to get water. The day was so hot. As I came out the door, I saw the cloud descending. It whirred like a thousand engines. It shifted shape as it came, settling first over Daddy's wheat. Grasshoppers, eating tassels, leaves, stalks. 
Then, coming closer to the house, eating Ma's garden, the fence post, the laundry, li laundry on the line, and then the grasshoppers came right over me, descending on Ma's apple trees. I climbed onto the trees, opening scabs on my tender hands, grasshoppers clinging to them. I tried beating them away, but the grasshoppers ate every leaf. They ate every piece of fruit. Nothing left but a couple apple cores hanging from Ma's trees. I couldn't tell her, couldn't bring myself to say. Her apples were gone. I never had a chance. Ma died that day, giving birth to my brother. No, I was right. April 1934. Wait, wait, wait. Okay.